Twenty thirteen was a momentous year for me in my journey as a tech reviewer because that's when I picked up my first MacBook Air and haven't looked back at the Windows ecosystem since. A few laptops came and went, but none came this close. to capturing my attention like this one right next to me the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED UX 3402 you get the drift i hate the names of windows laptops these days hi i'm ashad you're watching track and take english and this is currently my favorite thin and light ultrabook windows laptop available right now by the way there is enough and more reasons for you guys to stay tuned till the end of the video because i'll reveal something about myself and laptops that might just shock you Now the attraction started with the design. It's got this aluminum alloy body which is fairly slim and I really like this new redesigned Asus motif on the top of the lid. Asus has actually carried forward this logo from one of the ZenBooks the 30th anniversary ZenBooks that it made a few years ago. The hinge has also been redesigned right now with these new premium Zen caps and you know with the famous concentric Asus circles and you know it actually enables this lid to go as flat as 180 degrees. Now this is also an ergo lift hinge meaning that it can prop your keyboard at a slight angle making it easier for typing. Not that it's a game changer or anything but it's a good to have feature now while you can open the lid with consummate ease with just one finger even if there's a slight disturbance in the force the lid wobbles a lot like a man who can't handle his drinks Now if you've come this far don't forget to hit the red subscribe button the bell icon right next to it the like button the comment uh, you know section out there is also very dry please comment below so that this review can reach more people looking for a review of the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED Anyhow the laptops available in two different colors one's called Ponda Blue the other one's called Aqua Celadon I like the Ponda Blue variant I don't know why it's called Ponda Blue I don't know if it makes you ponder but yeah I mean that's the name it looks nice Now it is not the thinnest and lightest ultrabook around at 16.9 mm thick and you know 1.39 kilograms but it is fairly light and slim and of course it fits in the backpack really nicely it doesn't weigh you down at all as for the ports you have almost everything you get two thunderbolt 2.0 type c ports one usb 3.2 gen 2 type a port hdmi 2.0 b 3.5 mm combo jack and a micro sd card slot Now the indented keyboard also adds to the experience of using the keyboard and of course the key travel of 1.4 mm ensures that you get a very good typing experience for a membrane keyboard it's actually very very good now obviously i was typing much faster on this keyboard compared to the horrendous butterfly switch keyboard on my MacBook Pro 13 inch you know 2017 variant now there's also this very nice move by Asus to actually keep the delete key at the top right corner instead of the fingerprint scanner and therefore you know enabling touch type typists to actually type faster and not you know miss out on that immediate fast key press now one thing i didn't like about the keyboard is that the arrow keys are really squashed and for my pudgy you know fingers it was a really tough time getting adjusted to it in fact i couldn't get adjusted to it even now now coming back to the good things asus leaves no stone unturned with the inclusion of a digital number pad 2.0 on the touchpad itself now initially i thought that it would be a gimmick but it is actually not i found it to be quite useful because of one major reason and that is that you can actually use the number pad to you know type out your numbers or you know do any calculations that you would like and you can also use it as a touchpad even with the number pad on at the same time this is a really really cool integration and it works really well too fun fact on this touchpad itself there's another digital key on the top swiping on it actually brings up the calculator on windows 11 i found that to be a really nifty feature i think that asus actually adds features that come in really handy so you don't miss out on the number pad even when you don't have a full size keyboard on this machine and the glass touchpad itself is a joy to use with you know it responding to all my swipes and gestures and not missing a beat any single time i didn't miss on my macbook touchpad which i absolutely love of course but this one is very good too obviously the pesta resistance of this laptop 
is the 14 inch OLED panel with 2.8K resolution. And of course, the rest of the display specs are very impressive too. You get a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, 90% screen to body ratio with fairly slim bezels, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut with Pantone validation and VESA display HDR500 true black compatibility with 550 nits of peak brightness as well. And I saved the best for last. You get 90 hertz screen refresh rate on this display, which for some odd reason is not on by default. You will have to go and do that from the Windows display settings. Now couple that with the 0.2 millisecond response time and you get a very, very smooth experience. Now this display itself has a negligible color shift when you look at it from an angle and it can get really bright, especially in HDR content. Plus it looks extremely crisp too. Now, one of the concerns with many Windows laptops that came and went in this time of me using a MacBook has been that displays weren't tuned really well and therefore I couldn't test my camera samples, my smartphone camera samples on them because I couldn't see the true colors. But that's not really a problem with this one out here and it works really well. Now, obviously, since it's an OLED display, I'm pretty certain that you have concerns of burn-in. But Asus has answers for that too. Firstly, this is a Samsung panel with a very refined, you know, Samsung OLED burn-in technology and it has a default OLED setting which goes into uh, action after five minutes of the display being idle, where it actually dims the display. Now, there's also the special pixel shift technology which you can enable from the My ASUS app directly. What it essentially does is it moves the pixels slightly to ensure that there's no static image at any given point of time. You won't even notice it. It happens without any visible change to the quality of the image itself and ensures that it doesn't cause burn-in over a prolonged usage period. And finally, there's this very special OLED wallpaper which sort of kicks in after 30 minutes of you not doing anything on the display itself. This again ensures that, you know, the, uh, the display has more longevity when it comes to OLED screen burn-in. Actually, OLED burn-in is a bigger problem with bigger screens compared to smartphones, if you guys have noticed. And if all that is not enough, Asus also gives you a warranty of 7,000 hours of of, you know, using this display without any burn-in at 200 nits of brightness, which is very, very good. Honestly, I love the display on this Asus laptop. In fact, I love it so much more than the MacBook that that is one primary reason why it's making me want to shift to this laptop. Now, there are two speakers on this laptop and they're placed in a way that they're raised slightly from the bottom and therefore you get a louder sound as well. Now, Asus adds a host of features. It's also tuned by Harman Kardon and you get Dolby Atmos support as well. But to be entirely honest, it doesn't sound very good good. I'm not a fan of the speakers on these on this laptop. I feel that, you know, MacBooks and generally uh, there are a certain other laptops that I tested in the past, like for example, the Surface Pro, which actually sounds better compared to this specific one. And as you know, webcams go, you get a 720p HD webcam on this one. It's as good as it gets. It's not any great. It's okay enough for Zoom calls, but if you want better quality, you might want to invest in a better webcam. And of course, there is no, you know, shutter for privacy. So that's something that you have to keep in mind as well. Now, the variant of the, uh, you know, Asus ZenBook 14 OLED that I reviewed has, uh, you know, Intel's latest 12th generation processor. It's the i7-1260P with four performance cores and, you know, eight efficiency cores to go along with it. You also do get more affordable variants with the Core i5 and 1240p processor as well. There's also 16 GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 512 GB of, you know, M.2 NVMe SSD as well. It's a really powerful laptop for an Ultrabook. And of course, you also get Intel's Evo certification, which means that you get features like, you know, instant wake and of course, a certified battery life of at least nine hours. Now, I didn't go into deep performance testing because this is not meant to be a performance machine, but I noticed that apps open instantly really fast multitasking works really well too and that's i think most of the use case for this specific laptop i did run a few tests especially pc mark and uh, you know geekbench two scores that i think will matter a lot to users buying this specific laptop and it returned very competitive scores uh, up there at the top with the best ultra portables that are available so yeah nothing to worry out here now if you're looking for something for gaming specifically then this is definitely not the one for you you will have to look at a gaming specific laptop and there are many available in this price range too, which will come with a discrete graphics card as well. But uh, more importantly, you will have to lose out on the ultra portable nature of this machine and of course, sacrifice some battery life too. I of course didn't try any AAA games, but I love gaming. So I tried Hades and Ori and the Will of Wisps. 
and platformers like these run just fine on the you know ZenBook 14 OLED. But what mattered to me more was does this machine get hot? It doesn't get hot on the surface as much in regular usage or even when I, when I was running benchmark tests, but it does let out a lot of heat from the vents themselves. So you know on the sides when you're holding them uh, or you know using it, you can feel the heat flowing out. Now the fans start firing really quickly on this machine, of course. Uh, this is the main difference that I noticed between an M1, you know, MacBook Air and, you know, the laptop with i7. Also, I noticed that the M1 is slightly more power efficient as well. Now, talking about power efficiency, the battery inside this is a 75 watt hour unit and, uh, you know, the ones in the affordable variants have a 70 watt hour unit. And that's actually the biggest part inside, uh, you know, the laptop itself. Now, in my testing, I noticed that it ran for about eight hours and 34 minutes, which is very close to the nine hours mark. But then again, that will vary according to your usage as well. I was using it in balance mode for most of the time and sometimes even playing a few games. So maybe that, you know, drew a lot more battery. But yeah, 8 or 34 is pretty good too. Now coming to software, Asus bundles the latest edition of Windows 11 on this line of laptops. I was genuinely surprised at how snappy Windows felt now. It looks really beautiful too. Gestures are intuitive. Snapping Windows is it's very snappy. Apps look really good too. Themes are very beautiful as well. I really like what Microsoft has done with Windows 11 and it feels like a very nice refresh because one of the things that was deterring me from using Windows was because Mac, uh, you know, OS just felt more beautiful. Not anymore. I really like the look of Windows. What I did find annoying while using the laptop is not Windows related, but more to do with the fact that there was this heavy handed push from, you know, the machine to actually make me install McAfee for some reason. And I was not really a fan of that. But uh, on the contrary, there is a very useful My Asus app, which I thought would just be a promotional push, but it actually has genuinely useful features within the software itself. If you do end up buying the machine, you should definitely check out the My Asus app for all that it offers. The Asus ZenBook 14 OLED is a fantastic thin and light, which requires very little convincing for anybody looking for a thin and light Windows Ultrabook. I absolutely love it and I'm going to recommend it to many folks as well. And I feel that Asus has priced it really well too. It starts at about 89,000 rupees, if I'm not mistaken. And this variant out here is about 4,990. And it, of course, undercuts, you know, the MacBook and everything. But of course, for an Asus machine that costs over a lakh, it does pack in more features that you could have asked for. And you know what? The display spec is the same across all the variants from the basic one to, you know, the most expensive one. Honestly, I was this close to switching to the ZenBook 14, uh, you know, OLED as my primary machine. Because my MacBook Pro 2017 is in a really bad shape and I need a new machine anyway. But I am too invested in, you know, the Apple ecosystem to make that switch. It's very difficult for me to do that. But I'm really, really impressed that Asus managed to come this close to making me feel conflicted about this whole thing. So what do you guys think of the new Asus ZenBook 14 OLED UX3402? Let me know in the comment section below. And I know you guys have been staying till the end and I told you I will reveal something about me and laptops is that this is actually in my, you know, about 10, 12 years of being a tech journalist, my very first review of a laptop. So I hope you guys liked it. And if you guys have any feedback, do let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Airshot signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.